welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, in today's video, I want to kind of go back to the basics as I feel like the videos that I've done so far explaining the finance have been about things that are not complex as such, but I feel like they're a bit more advanced, such as equity release, for example. So I kind of wanted to just go back to the basics and actually explain to you guys what a mortgage is and how it differs to your typical personal loan. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. Now, when you're buying a house, it is most likely going to be the biggest purchase of your life. As let's face it, they are quite expensive compared to obviously our income, unless you're lucky enough to be a millionaire. Now, before we get into the video, I do want to make it clear that it is very important to research mortgages on your own as well, prior to looking at getting one. And the best way to do that is to contact an independent mortgage advisor. He can talk you through the whole process and help you out. So let's start with, what is a mortgage? Now in simple terms, a mortgage is actually just a loan taken out to buy either a property or a piece of land. Now the loan is actually secured on the property or land that you are buying. Therefore, if you don't make your repayments, the lender can actually repossess your home as they do have the legal right to do that. Now, most mortgages run between 25 to 35 years. Obviously, the term will depend on not only your current circumstances, your plans, your needs, and ultimately, your affordability, as the longer the term, the lower the monthly repayments. Most lenders will typically provide you with 85 to 90% of your property value, which is commonly referred to as loan to value, or LTV for short. So in order to make up the full 100% of the purchase price, you will need to put a down payment, also referred to as a deposit of either 10 to 15%. I would always say put down more rather than less as that then allows you to receive more preferential interest rates from lenders. So I would always aim for at least a 15% deposit. So how does the mortgage differ to your normal personal loan? They are both a form of borrowing. So yeah, they are both loans. However, with a personal loan, they are actually restricted to a maximum of 25,000 with a maximum term of 10 years. Whereas with a mortgage, you've got a lot more flexibility in terms of the amount as well as the term of the mortgage. So with a mortgage, some lenders will have their own lending limits. However, you know, you're talking millions of pounds. Also with the mortgage, it is actually tied to the property that you were buying. It is a form of secured lending, whereas most of your personal loans are a form of unsecured lending. Therefore, there is no asset backing them up. In turn, what that means is interest rates tend to be a lot lower on mortgages than what they are for personal loans, just because of how the risk is perceived. So with the mortgage, because it's secured against the property, if you fail your repayments, the bank can actually repossess your home and sell it to gain the money back. Whereas with a personal loan, if you default, they then have to take you to court to try and obtain the money back, which from their point of view, it's a much more lengthy process and therefore it's a riskier investment from their point of view. Now there are actually two main types of mortgages, or shall I say repayment methods. So you've got your traditional repayment mortgages, whereby the actual monthly repayment is made up of two parts. So you've got your capital and you've got your interest part. Now the capital is actually what reduces your outstanding balance. So what you'll find in the early days of your mortgage, because it is stretched over, let's say a 30 year term, what you actually find with your monthly repayments is that it is not equal. It's not a 50-50. At the beginning of your term, you will be paying more interest than you are capital. But as your balance reduces, that then goes the other way and you start paying off more capital and paying back less interest, which is why it's important to try and overpay your mortgage if you do have the means to do so, as you will notice that benefit a lot faster. The other repayment method is an interest only method, which isn't as popular nowadays, and you do have to have a really good, 
strategy in place in order to be able to justify an interest only mortgages. I will do a separate video about them because I do feel like it's something that should be discussed in more detail and to be able to provide you guys with a lot more information on that subject. However, for the purposes of this video, I just want to give you guys an outline of it so you've got a bit of an understanding. So with an interest only mortgage, your monthly repayment is actually only the interest, which makes it significantly lower to a repayment mortgage. However, your balance is not reducing over the term. So at the end of your mortgage term, whether it's 25 or 30 years, you still have that full balance outstanding. So when I say you need to have a strategy in place to repay that, you must prove to a lender that you have something at the end of that mortgage term that will repay that loan in full. Now you can also get a combination of both. So you can split your mortgage in that you've got part of it on the repayment basis and part of it on an interest only basis. This is more beneficial for probably more complex cases or where the strategy to, is to ultimately pay off a chunk of the loan after let's say a few years as what people tend to do is they tend to put the repayment side of things onto a longer fixed term rate as that's locked away and they've got certainty over that whereas the interest only part they would normally have some sort of repayment strategy in the near future and would therefore leave that amount on the variable rate to give them the flexibility to pay that off at any point but once again combination mortgages are also not that common and are only really used in certain situations but it's worth knowing that it is an option the last thing i want to touch upon when it comes to mortgages is the various interest rates that you can actually opt for when you are taking a mortgage out and once again please do consult a mortgage advisor as they will be able to explain the different options to you in more detail and actually find the most suitable outcome based on your current needs and also your future plans. So I will only touch up on two types of interest rates. There are more, however, once again, I will do a separate video on all the interest rate types available. However, for the purposes of this video, I will only concentrate on the two most common ones in the marketplace at this moment in time. So your first one is a fixed rate, which I would say is probably the most common in the market especially now with interest rates being so low what a fixed interest rate does is it provides you with certainty as if you fix for let's say five years you will know that your repayments no matter what happens to the market they will not change for that five year period now the downside to a fixed rate is that they don't offer much flexibility and if you are wanting to pay off a bigger chunk of your mortgage there are early repayment charges to consider which are normally a percentage of your outstanding balance however most lenders do allow you to make overpayments of up to 10% every single year so you can utilize that instead now the other type I want to discuss are the variable interest rate which actually can fluctuate and it can, can move up and down therefore it actually gives you no certainty about your monthly repayments as they can change on a regular basis now compared with a fixed interest rate a variable one is actually a lot more flexible in that there are no early repayment charges and if you want to repay your mortgage early or make major overpayments above the 10% that's allowed with a fixed interest rate you can do that without any penalties variable rates are more risky however they tend to be cheaper than a fixed rate to reflect the fact that you as the consumer are taking on more risk and that is it for this video i hope you found it useful and it has given you a bit of an overview as to what a mortgage actually is and i know i keep banging on about this but when you are looking to get a mortgage especially if you are a first time buyer please consult an independent mortgage advisor as they will be able to provide you with specific advice on your current needs as well as your future needs and they'll be able to find the most suitable product to suit you if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel down below as it really helps me to grow i would also love to hear from you so do come say hi in the comment section below thanks for watching and i'll see you on monday with a brand new video bye guys